Can we talk a bit about the consciousness hacking tools? Because that seems to be a pretty necessary thing that people are going to have to start getting into if they are to upgrade their capacity to deal with the world. Yeah, so I'll give you two that are certainly true and good examples of the path. So the first is the easiest, and that has to do with emotional resilience. You know, the ability to respond to challenge while maintaining a presence in your prefrontal cortex, not limbic. You don't have a fight or flight amygdala hijack response, but to be able to hold your sovereignty comprehensively. You know, one of the things that happens is we've got pretty good training regimes for, say, like firefighters to be able to keep their head in the game under duress in a fire. But those same individuals, if they get into a fight with their wife, completely drop out of sovereignty. So it's actually a much deeper work to be able to hold your personal integrity under all possible duress. That is a big piece of the work of consciousness hacking is that. Boy, I tell you what, that is a serious, serious path. You know, everybody has deeply vulnerable blind spots and you might have unbelievably high degree of emotional resilience in general and still have these deeply vulnerable blind spots. And still it's like, you know, a kid being willing to go into the, into the crucible, no matter where you are and having the ability to just, and by the way, the support, you know, the love and the ability to kind of fall back on somebody who you really trust to take care of you, to go into those spaces is integral. No, nobody can make the right kind of progress on their own. Okay, so that's the first. And I think everybody should be very aware of the fact that that is actually deep consciousness hacking. <sighs> Super deep. It's really hard to get there using any kind of normal practices. And given the time frame we've got, I really do agree that without use of medicine, by which I mean drugs, I don't think we can pull it off, except for very rare circumstances. Second, trans-paradigmatic or trans-perspectival mind. So we've been talking about this notion of getting outside of the paradigmatic mind. And you know, while for the generation Omega, this is something that they may be able to actually just do developmentally. But the process of being able to get very fluid with that as grownups, it's going to have to happen too. I mean, people over the age of 18 have a role to play in this thing. And learning how to actually build a kind of consciousness that is able to use paradigmatic models without being of paradigmatic models. It's real. It can be done and is, a again, a certain necessity. It is necessary to be effective in the world. And that's very, very much a consciousness hacking thing. Like if you can get to the recognition that you are not your ego mind, you are not your sense-making paradigmatic framework, you are in fact the author of that and therefore have the capacity to step beyond it and witness it and even author other ones and then use them, but from a place that is not driven by them. I guess many people who are hearing that may think that sounds like nonsense, and that's kind of the point. That's another deep practice that is certainly within the domain of consciousness hacking. Then, once you've done both of those, once you've built the capacity to maintain an extremely high degree of sovereignty under arbitrary, unpredictable, and uncertain crisis, and have built the capacity to be able to hold and build paradigms without becoming of them, you then have the capacity to begin delving into the deeply mysterious. If you haven't done both of those, delving into the deeply mysterious is quite likely going to lead you to come back with monsters, to come back with things that are either being driven by bad emotional responses, like the defense mechanisms clothed in sense, or to bring back rationalizations that are uh, derivatives of paradigms not novel or just straight out nonsense. But if you have those two capacities in place, then you can start submerging yourself into deeply mysterious things and beginning to grasp stuff that is not yet well understood without falling into trying to make sense too quickly or simply allowing nonsense to take over. The liminal space between sense and nonsense.